antibody studies boost hope for HIV cure, pioneering trials discover potential strategy to keep virus in check after stopping treatment, it's been very rough the last few weeks, epidemiologist Wafa Elsadr said here on March 9 during the opening ceremony of the largest annual HIV-AIDS conference in the United States. Elsadr had a major grant from the U.S. Agency for International Development, which President Donald Trump's administration terminated, and Columbia University, where she works, saw $400 million in other federal grants and contracts cut over its alleged failure to address anti-Semitism on campus. Now, she said, I feel I'm with friends and family. Shock, grief. And anger about the U.S. cuts in funding for public health and biomedicine dominated many of the conversations as 3,700 HIV-AIDS researchers, healthcare workers, and advocates gathered last week for the conference on retroviruses and opportunistic infections. Meeting Chair Diane Havler, an HIV-AIDS researcher at the University of California, San Francisco, UCSF, denounced the abrupt withdrawal of funding for HIV treatment and prevention services as cataclysmic and cruel. The recklessness we're seeing is like dropping an egg on the floor, you can't just pick it up and put it back the way it was, said HIV-AIDS advocate Rebecca Dennison. Dennison, who has lived with HIV for 35 years, told scientists at the meeting, your work saved my life. But the conference also brought some hopeful news. Promising data suggest a drug could ward off HIV infection for a full year after a single injection, a potential breakthrough in so-called pre-exposure prophylaxis, PrEP. Researchers also reported that unusual antibodies could help people control HIV without antiretroviral drugs, a possible step toward a cure. We've made major progress, said Stephen Deeks, an HIV cure researcher at UCSF. One possibility is that when BNABs bind to HIV as it rebounds, the resulting complex leads to an extra potent attack on the virus called the vaccinal effect, which boosts T-cells that target infected cells for destruction. Sogard described evidence for a vaccinal effect in a study participant who received a latency reversal agent and BNABs and has controlled HIV without treatment for more than seven years. Some people produce high levels of antibodies on their own that have similar neutralizing powers. Mauro Garcia, a PhD student at Johns Hopkins University, described how people who had higher levels of these autologous neutralizing antibodies, ANABs, against HIV had a highly significant delay in viral rebound after they stopped taking drugs. Assessing these ANAB levels in people on treatment, Garcia said, provides a strong predictor of who will be able to keep the virus in check on their own, it's not just one mechanism that's maintaining control against HIV after treatment is stopped, Sogard said. He thinks the immune system remains the best route to a cure. I'm focused on enhancing immunity, he said, and I think that's the way to go for now. Now, Deeks's group and a half dozen others have recruited people who have fully suppressed HIV with antiretroviral drugs and given them rare antibodies that, in test tube studies, neutralized a wide range of HIV variants. Many antibodies simply bind to the virus, and those that neutralize it typically only work against a limited number of viral mutants. Without any interventions, only 4% of people who stop their drugs still controlled their infections 84 days later, a recent meta-analysis showed. But in a handful of trials done so far, the virus was undetectable for at least 84 days in 10% to 20% of those who received these broadly neutralizing antibodies, BNABs, and then stop treatment. It's not perfect, but at least it's a signal that's worthwhile building on, said clinician and epidemiologist Ol Schmelt Sogard, who studies HIV cures at Aarhus University. Thumbine Dung Yu of the Africa Health Research Institute reported on the first cure study in Africa, which used two BNABs in 20 women. In four of them, the virus remains undetectable 55 weeks after they stopped taking drugs and one has been off medication for 2.5 years. It's now a question of trying to figure out why is there that small signal, Dungyu said. Another study, in the United Kingdom and Denmark, randomly assigned 68 people to receive either two BNABs or a placebo. 20 weeks after stopping all treatment. 75% of those in the BNAB group had not rebounded, versus 8.8% in the placebo group. Most treated people received a second dose of BNABs at 20 weeks, and seven of those went on to maintain complete control for at least another year, 
an extremely unusual result, said immunologist Sarah Feidler of Imperial College London, who presented the findings. Determining why it works in some people and not others is absolutely key, she said, noting there are many players in the primitive innate and the more sophisticated adaptive immune systems. Still, long-acting PrEP could make a major difference, and that promise is in jeopardy. On February 6, the U.S. Department of State said the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, which has provided PrEP for 91% of the 8 million people who have used it so far, will now only support the drugs for pregnant or breastfeeding people, a small fraction of those at high risk of HIV. We are shocked that the amazing investment that was done by the U.S. government has been suddenly cut, said Beatrice Grinstein, head of the International AIDS Society. Research, however, continues to fuel hope, even against the central obstacle to curing HIV, the reservoir of immune cells in infected people that harbor viral DNA. Integrated into their chromosomes. Even when antiretroviral drugs successfully suppress the virus, this latent HIV can roar back when people stop taking their medication. For the past 20 years, cure researchers have tested drugs called latency reversal agents that try to shock the reservoir cells into producing virus, which should lead to their self-destruction or an immune attack. The hope was that the remaining, smaller reservoirs should be easier for the immune system to keep in check. But that strategy hasn't worked. Most everyone who paused their antiretroviral drugs after taking latency reversal agents saw their HIV skyrocket within a few weeks. The PrEP data come on the heels of two large efficacy trials that showed a single shot of the drug lenacapavir offered solid protection against HIV infection for six months. That was a major improvement over current once-daily prevention pills, and an achievement science named its 2024 breakthrough of the year. At the meeting, scientists from Gilead Sciences, the maker of lenacapavir, presented data from a trial in which 40 participants received a 5-gram dose of lenacapavir, more than five times higher than the earlier formulation. After one year, drug levels in participants' plasma exceeded those seen with the lower dose at six months, suggesting the drug would remain protective. As a clinical pharmacologist, it gives me great pleasure to see a small molecule last this long. Gilead's Renu Singh said, UC San Diego virologist Douglas Richman agrees the data, described in an March 11 paper in The Lancet, are very impressive. A downside of the high dose, given as an injection into a gluteal muscle rather than a subcutaneous shot in the belly, pain at the injection site. Icing the area before the shot helps, and Singh says the dose will likely be reduced. Gilead plans to launch efficacy trials this year. PrEP alone can't reverse worrisome trends in HIV epidemiology, researchers say. An estimated 1.3 million people were infected last year, far more than the 370,000 that the Joint United Nations Program on HIV-AIDS five years ago set as its goal for this year. The Middle East, North Africa, Eastern Europe, Central Asia, and Latin America have seen expanding epidemics. Epidemiologist Chris Bearer who heads the Duke University Global Health Institute, said the latest projections show that without a vaccine, still nowhere in sight, or a cure, HIV prevalence will continue to grow even if PrEP use is scaled up.